Welcome! Today I will show you three popular logic riddles. The first one is very tricky, the second one already quite hard and the third one extremely difficult. Let's get to the first riddle. Anna wakes up in the morning and notices that she has overslept. On her to-do list for today is a very important job interview and she needs to really hurry to make it on time. Unfortunately, it's pitch dark in her room because the lamp is broken and Anna needs to find a suitable pair of socks. She knows that on her clothesline hang 23 black and 17 white socks. How many socks does Anna have to take to be 100% sure to have two same colored socks? Pause the video now to have more time to think. 3, 2, 1. This is a tricky one. If you are under time pressure, like Anna, it's probably not easy to quickly come up with the right idea. The amount of black and white socks actually is of no relevance for the riddle. It doesn't matter if there are 23, 50 or 200 black socks hanging on Anna's line. More important is the fact that there are only two traits that the socks can have. It's either black or white. Therefore, when she grabs the third sock, she will definitely have one pair of socks which shares the color. The next riddle will be harder than the first one. The king whom you advise has the information that there is a spy between his men. Now the three people, Michael, Julian and Jeff, are brought to him. One of them is a knight, one a knave and one is the spy. The knight always tells the truth, the knave always lies and the spy can either lie or tell the truth. Michael says, Jeff is a knave. Julian says, Michael is a knight and Jeff says, I am the spy. Can you satisfy your king and tell him who the spy is? Pause here for more thinking time. 3, 2, 1. The king trusts in your logical abilities in the hope of finally catching the spy. You know that Julian is not the knight, since if he were, then Michael would also have to be the knight, which doesn't work. Jeff cannot be the knight, since his statement would then be a lie. Now you know that Michael is the knight, Jeff must be the knave and Julian is the spy. Your king will be happy with you. The third riddle is one of my favorite and one of the most difficult logic riddles I know. 100 extremely intelligent prisoners are imprisoned in solitary cells. There is a room with 100 small boxes numbered and labeled from 1 to 100. Inside each of these boxes is a slip of paper with one of the prisoners names on it. Each prisoners name only appears once and is in only one of the 100 boxes. The warden gives the prisoners a last chance and decides to play a game. If the prisoners win, they will be set free. But if they lose, they will all be executed immediately. The prisoners are allowed to enter the room in any predetermined order they wish. But each prisoner can only enter the room once and the game ends as soon as the 100th prisoner left the room. Once a prisoner enters the room, he can look into any 50 boxes, then shut the boxes again and leave everything exactly the way it was before he entered. They are not allowed to communicate with each other in any way. If every prisoner is able to enter the room and open the box with his own name, they will all be released from prison. However, if even one prisoner does not open the box with his own name on it, they will all be executed. Luckily for the prisoners, the warden has decided that the first prisoner is allowed to open all 100 boxes and switch any two names he would like to. The week before the game starts, the warden allows the prisoners to get together in the courtyard to come up with a plan. What strategy can the prisoners come up with that guarantees them to win the game? Remember, in order to win this game, all 100 prisoners need to enter the room and open the box with their name in it. Pause the video now to have more time to think. 3, 2, 1. Believe it or not, there is a strategy which guarantees that all the prisoners will be set free. Here is what the prisoners need to do. They decide the order in which they will enter the room and look inside the boxes. Then they need to memorize the name and the position of all other prisoners. 
Once the first prisoner enters the room, he will open box 1. If this box does not contain his name, he will go to the box with a number associated with the prisoner's name that was in the first box and open it. For example, if the first box contains the name of prisoner 32, then prisoner 1 will check box 32. If that box contains the name of prisoner 76, he will then open box 76 and so on and so forth. Once prisoner 1 opens the box that contains his own name, he doesn't need to continue opening boxes and he can exit the room. Now prisoner 2 will enter the room, start with box 2 and do the same thing again. Prisoner 3 will start with box 3, prisoner 4 with box 4 and so on. This strategy by itself already has a greater than 30% chance that everybody will find their name and because the warden allowed prisoner 1 to open all 100 boxes and swap two names, success can be guaranteed. This is because the strategy works on a series of loops. For example, prisoner 1 goes through the boxes 1, 32, 76, 52 and then finds his name in box 13. Every prisoner's name within this loop is also guaranteed to find his own name because they follow through the same loop starting at the box corresponding with their number. If there's a loop that is over 50 steps long, there can only be one because two 51 step loops would require 102 boxes. The first prisoner can go through each loop and if there does happen to be one that is over 50 steps long, he can just swap two names from it to cut the loop in half. As long as there are no loops inside these boxes that are greater than 50 steps, the prisoners will always win. These were three of my favorite logic riddles. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.